Hello and welcome to the sideboard here at SCG Dallas. My name is Ruben Bressler and I am joined by a noted deck designer and, uh, and writer for Star City Games. You know him about okay. Boss Naya, uh, Mono Black Vampires from the first Invitational, several other decks over the years. Tom Ross, how you doing? I'm good, man. How are you? I'm good. And uh, and today you've brought something that um, we've seen written about on Star City yeah. Games a little bit recently and that you won an IQ with, right. and that's Boss Slide. Yeah, uh, I wrote an article about it. It went up, uh, I think, yesterday, um, called 21. I played 21 One Drops, if that's the name. Um, it originated trying to play uh, as many One Drops as I could to beat the Mono Black deck. To get under your Mono Black and Esper. I felt like people were going to try to go over the top of each other and it was perfect time to go underneath. Yeah, them. exactly. And so you were sneaking underneath people with things like Legion Loyalist and right. Fire Drink Crusader, some cards that had fallen out of favor. And of course, a Crowan Crusader was really the centerpiece of that particular build of the deck. But you've gone away from that for this weekend because Mono Black has sort of faded in a little right. bit of popularity. Yeah, so you've decided to go more towards two drops. Yeah, it originated where I was trying to make the Crowan Crusader very good. So that's what brought me to Titan Strength and to. Uh, Mad Cat skills. But for this weekend, um, a lot of the mono black decks have uh, incorporated Golgari Charm and uh, Electric Reef and out of red decks. Because uh, Bam Lunk was one, um, the last Star City game book, with the white winged deck and uh, Frankfurt San Santiago. That's was, black uh, red. Black red. red. So yeah. There's a lot of X1s in the format. And I, I predicted that they would attack that. Absolutely. So I wanted more X2s in my deck. Every two color combination has at least one 2 1 that they can lean on. And now that yeah. Tormented Heroes seeing play, in addition to uh, Dryad Militant, Soldier of the Pantheon, Fire Drinker Seder, there's so many one toughness creatures, you felt that that's not where you really want it to be. Yeah. So instead, you're leaning on Gorehouse Chainwalker and more two drops like uh, Ash Shell yeah. uh, to be able to keep the pressure on even yeah. past an electricery or a jace or something like that. Yeah, I, I, cut, I cut most of the cute stuff, the Dragon Mantles, which were very good, and the Throne Crusaders. Um, yeah, it's, it's basically just instead of um, burning your emissary and the uh, Mac Gap skills on your Throne Crusader, which was often the opening before, now it's just, you know, Fire Trigger Seder, Burning Trigger Seder, Emissary, the Gorosh uh, Shamal, which sure. does the job pretty well too. Yeah, absolutely. So people are still don't value how good Mono Red can be, still. Uh, just because I think that it, it just has that uh, tradition of being the deck that good players don't play. People yeah. always underestimate Pretty simple. Keep the build. But there are some very interesting decisions that you have to do, especially in the, the, the Dragon's Mantle version has some yeah, weird decisions. Yeah, it has a lot of play to it. Um, but e even this version of the deck has some interesting play with what do you target with Madcap skills, when do you play it out, yeah. do you wait for Supreme Verdict, and when do you play your burn, stuff like that. So it's not it's not nearly as easy as one might think. Mm -hmm. So uh, you won an IQ with right. it earlier, uh, a couple like a week or two ago. Right. And you're going to be playing in the Invitational in Las Vegas. Yeah, we'll that. It's about a month away. Or do you think that the metagame will shift enough that this will still be uh, good? Or do you think we'll go back to the Acroan Crusader version? Or do you think the metagame is I think this archetype ahead? is very good. Um, I think people will still be attacking X1s. Um, I don't think that's going to fade in the next month. So right now, um, if the Invitational is Mario play a stack right now, but I guess we have to see how the metagame will turn out. Sure. And of course, the Invitational is also half Legacy. And you're perhaps most known in Legacy for Zoo, I would say. Yeah. Uh, you had a win at a 5K way early on before the Open Series yeah, was the Open the last, Series. The last time I was here in Dallas was the, the, the Legacy Open Stars of Game Oh, there, there you go. And so uh, we'll have to see where you go with that one. I'm not sure a Chrome Crusader is going to cut it in Legacy, but it might. Yeah, Who knows? What now? Glistener Elf. Well, there you go. Glistener Elf in Legacy. That's also pretty good. So uh, you're. Uh, probably gonna start writing for Star City more often. We'll be yeah, able to about once a week. Good, because we, we need a uh, we need some red mages pumping up these decks, and uh, I, I like this deck a lot. And it's a ton of fun to watch. Uh, it's quick, so you got to tune in and make yeah, sure the that you're match watching. Is over all pretty times. fast. Uh, well, that's the idea. If the, if the feature match not over fast, yeah, then I'm something's not, I'm going wrong. Much there you go. So Tom Ross here in the sideboard. Thank you so much. Thank you, and we'll be back here from Dallas.